O Queen of Vrindavana, ever since some manjari named Rupa filled my eyes with lights in Vrajabhumi, I have strongly desired to see the red lack on your lotus feet. <clears throat> the devotee should have a natural love <coughs> for his bhajan. Just as a materialist, has a natural love for his wife, children, and money. <coughs> the heart should be filled with eagerness he should wander around crying out where are you Radharani <coughs> the Taraka Brahma Nama is the Mahamantra mm -hmm. the Lord should be called wholeheartedly by chanting these names just as a mother is called for by a lost child. <laughs> or as a husband is called by his chaste and loving wife when he is abroad. I am your maidservant, but I have never seen you. <coughs> Where are you? In which kunja or tree are you hiding? <coughs> <coughs> so we can hear from these words of Anantadus Babaji how long it is important in the life. Greed to attain something, to attain some goal is important. <coughs> and Baba is giving very nice example and compare it material <coughs> example with the spiritual example and in one sense there is no difference because behind is strong desire burning desire to attain my <coughs> desirable goal so we all have experiences in our life that if we want something, if we really want something, if we have great burning desire to do something, to attain something, to get something, we are ready to invest all our energy. Mental energy, intellectual, mental. Uh, physical, everything, and we are ready to go over all obstacles to attain it. <coughs> we all have this kind of desire, and we all have this kind of experience. 
And Baba is giving materialistic experience because it's much more close to us so that we can get some glimpse and uh, he's speaking about materialistic person who is greedy, naturally greedy for the money, for the wealth, for the families, for the house, for the car, for the new dress, new jewelry, whatever. He's very greedy. And Rupa Goswami is saying and praying, I want to be greedy like a rich man who wants more and more money. He didn't say normal person who wants the money. He said rich man, <coughs> because he already has a taste, he already has an attachment, because if the poor person is begging for money, you can give him a few euros or dollars and he will be very satisfied. Very satisfied. But if you try to satisfy the rich person, it's not so easy. Because his greed is so intense. And he wants more and more and more and he's never satisfied. <coughs> this is pure materialistic per uh, <coughs> example which our Acharyas are giving us to bring us close to the same thing like a spiritual life. Same feeling is necessary in a spiritual life. Same greed and same focus that I want to attain. What is the most difficult thing? To don't have any desire. <laughs> we want to be free from desire. But this is completely passive mood and will not bring person in any direction, in any experiences. Nothing. If he will live like a wood, like a stone. Because we can learn from the materialistic person who are very successful. They have fixed goal, they have greed to attain it, and they are ready to do everything to attain it, even to overcome all obstacles. So, the devotee who wants to learn and he sees the Guru everywhere, he can learn from a terrorist person. And he can say, no, they are not wrong actually. I'm wrong. I'm pretending to be a devotee, but I don't have such kind of desire like those persons. I don't have such a greed. I don't know what is my goal at all. Everything will be my goal. If we don't have a goal in the life, life is very, very difficult. Maybe in the young age it's not so obvious, but the more a person is becoming older, it's become more obvious. Living aimlessly, without goal, is completely wasting the time. It's living like a, I don't know, where wind blow, I'm going. Like a leaf on the wind. Where the wind blows, the leaf is going. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Completely. So, Acharyas are trying <coughs> to give us inspiration to find our spiritual goal. Mm -hmm. The goal for our ultimate benefit. Goal for our soul. And they are trying. They are because of that, they wrote so many books to, to convince us that this spiritual goal is so important 
It is eternal. And if the person defines, I want to be a spiritual person. I really want. Not because this is good fashion. It's a culture. My friends are spiritual persons, so I can be also. It must be our strong desire. I want that. Like we want to study something. I want to be a doctor. I want to be a doctor. If someone doesn't have such a strong, uh, clear decision, it's very difficult to study. Mm -hmm. I have my personal experience. <laughs> it's very difficult to study because I don't have an enthusiasm. I'm not inspired to attain. I'm just studying because I don't know what to do in my life, so I'm studying. Mm -hmm. But this is the wasting of time. And our Acharyas are saying the same thing. Focus on your spiritual life, find the goal in your spiritual life, and put your whole energy and the heart to attain that goal. And then help from the other side. We start to flow, to flow in unimaginable ways. Help will start to flow in our own. <coughs> and person who is focused on his goal, he will see and understand this help. This help will not go beside him. He will understand, oh, this is a help. This can help me, this can help me, this person can help me. Because he wants, he has desire to attain it. And he recognizes the help. If we don't have a goal, we cannot recognize the help. Help is here. And we are not recognizing and we are not ready to receive it. So this is not philosophy at all, actually. This is not Shastras at all. Logic, argument, Sanskrit, or whatever. This is natural life. Because by the nature, human beings are very greedy. This is the natural position of human beings. Be greed <coughs> for materialistic things. <coughs> so our acharyas are saying, just make opposite. Be greedy to attain your spiritual. If someone is enough fortune, <coughs> this kind of strong desire appears in his heart. <coughs> For him, his spiritual path will be much more easier <coughs> and pleasant. Even pleasant. Because his full enthusiasm <coughs> is not boring in his attempts to try to attain this supreme goal. And we can see here we are so fortunate that we are now in Vrindavan, which is supreme destination. There is no destination about Vrindavan. Supreme destination. So it means this is supreme goal. Because Radha and Krishna, supreme personalities of love, sweetness, kindness, compassion, are living here, eternally. So they are our supreme goal also. And all devotees who are around them, they are also in the same mood. So they are our supreme goal. Mm. And we are very fortunate 
that you are reading this book without a kosumaj. Because it brings us to Shimatri. Very easily. This is manual for Manjuri Bhav. Mm -hmm. How to bring devotees to the lotus field of Shimatri. Through the guidance of her Mitsu. And Raghunatha is praying here when my beloved friend Rupa Manjari enlighten my heart. In me appears greed and desire to serve the lotus feet of Shimon. This personal exchange. This is personal exchange. Really personal exchange, friend to friend. <coughs> There's also a, a beauty in this. <coughs> you have to take the hand and look in the eyes and exchange. Because in Vrindavan, everything is natural. Even relationship is natural. Exchange of love is natural. Because there is no whiff of <coughs> hidden motives, <coughs> then love can be natural <coughs> and fully experienced. We and cannot. Also, it, it, one one yes. also likes to distribute. You can't hide. You, you have to give it. Mm. Hey, welcome. <laughs> <Ooh>. <laughs> <laughs> so the mood is this and we need help to attain this but also on another on our side we have to define what we really want we cannot live in this in between situation so long time <laughs> so is cannot live in between in passive mood it's so boring. <laughs> so can go up or down. It has to move somehow. It's very boring to live. This is impersonal or passive move. So here in Vidal we have a chance actually to live a natural life. Everyone is interested for natural life. But this is the most natural life. To be with source of love. Jai Shri Ramata. I also want to take it back one more time to this what uh, Rupa Goswami has explained before actually. <coughs> Ananda, this Babaji, this Rati, this obsession is also natural. I think about artists, musicians, they are always greedy to become obsessed, <laughs> to become mad. Why? Because then so much is in their heart they can express it in, in the music and in the art. And if we study the people who are really famous, most of the time, I don't say all of the time, they have to change a lot of partners. <laughs> Especially also artists. Why? Because every new relationship will give them again some inspiration <laughs> for their work. They need to be constantly in love. So I feel the same in my life. If there is no obsession, if there is not this eagerness, what you say, and I call it really deep obsession, I become so Passive. Yes. Mm. Obsession means obsession. Sorry, thank you. 
You are crazy for something. <laughs> you have this unlimited desire. It grows, you know. It grows into like a disease. But in spiritual life also it needs to be somehow <coughs> cultivated the strong desire. Like for example Mozart, this pianist. When he was three or four years old, he got piano and then he became crazy. You know, he just started playing and he got diving into that and he always wanted to increase the music. If you, if you, there's one movie also about his life. He received the music from the ether. He was thinking in notes, he was feeling in notes. Mm -hmm. Everything was notes for him, was harmonies, you know, he, he was obsessed. <coughs> he became mad of playing music, making, you know, concerts, and the people also, they were so impressed by his music, his piano concerts and his uh, compositions. <coughs> So this obsession or rati, this is a rati. That is a spiritual energy and when this flow is coming of love, something will move. So I notice also in my life, in my life if something is not moving, I feel like Gurudev says, like a lake that is drying out. Mm. It gets mm. no movement and then it becomes stinky, what it always says. It starts smelling. Because there's not fresh flow. Not the fresh uh, input of, of inspiration, of love. And then especially in spiritual life also, when we uh, want to move further, then we need this kind of flow of love, ongoing flow. Then to find a balance in this, you know, not to be so fanatic, but uh, to find it within my heart. It's not an external thing to look at others, how they are flowing, but how to find it in my heart, it kind of makes a difference. Because we have experienced, all of us, how it is to be in the pressure of being someone who I am not. But when it comes from within, from this strong desire to grow into the service of our Swami, mm -hmm. of my Guru, of all Vaishnavas, then it is a healthy, healthy uh, career, healthy rati. <coughs> and we always like to be with those who are also greedy. Like we are here now very greedy together. No? Every morning we come, we don't want to miss this chance. We want to listen to the beautiful sound of Vilapa Kosmandali, of Raghunathas Goswami's obsession. This is a full obsessive book. <laughs> it's <he is> crazy, Goswami. <laughs> we need this kind of craziness to get moving. This is the fuel. It's a spiritual divine fuel that actually comes from Shrimati Radhika. Just to continue the flow of sanity, so we can see how much is important to have proper association. If we want something, if we want some goal to attain, we need a person who have the same goal. Mm -hmm. 
If we want to be musician, we need association of musicians. Because in that we can exchange so many things and improve our talents and <clears throat> so on. So if we want to really become greedy, spiritually greedy, then we need association of those who are already on that level. And also we need association of those who are trying to attain that level. Because in this kind of association we can exchange the same thoughts, same uh, feelings, same <coughs> sufferings, same, same things, doubts, and so on and so on. So in creation it's, it, it says, if you want to be a drunk person, you have to associate with drunk persons. You cannot be drunk uh, in the association of sober persons. It's not possible. <laughs> So it, the same thing is here. If you want this kind of obsession, spiritual obsession and addiction, then we have to, to be in the close association of Rasik Because they are obsessed with Rasa. They are swimming, they are diving, they are drowning. In rasa, of radicals appearance, radicals qualities, radicals names, radicals pasta. So I just want to do that. And I want to share that yesterday we were also drowning in our kirtan in this kind of crazy madness. <laughs> I, I just, just sitting with all of you and then also Sachinandan Bhaya came. And, you know, maybe we don't speak in words about our feelings very much. For me, he's also kind of shy person. He starts singing, playing, you can feel the fire and his anchoring and his greed. So, that is actually precious moments. And then we feel it and the fire is catching our hearts too. <laughs> We become really completely crazy. We don't know what's happening. <laughs> it's not about singing right or catching the right tunes. It's like catching the fire of each other's hearts. We miss the tunes. Yeah, we so miss the tunes. <laughs> so many times. <laughs> yes, we, we miss the rhythm. Yes, we miss everything. We, we do not perfect. Because when you become mad also, it doesn't... It's not, not mattering that you must be perfect. It's just like... It's happening. And that's what we call to become the instrument of love. Then at one point, Gornitai, Shimati Radhika, they are using us. And that is Param Vijayati, Sri Krishna Sankita. When they take over, then we become their instruments. And then the energy is of a completely different quality than any concert that anyone can listen to. Then it's just overwhelming love, overwhelming desire, overwhelming grief and of separation. On all these things that we talk about in our classes, they become life. And they become we can feel them. There's no more words needed. We're just in the 
tuning of each other's love. And then when this happens in Vrindavan, like it happened yesterday, not only in the holy, but in our kirtan or the day before, you know, in front of Radha Mohan. Then we feel this quality of <laughs> energy and devotion that I always want to have in my life because it's my home as a natural and we can have it here in Vrindavan we are lucky when devotees also open their hearts through any expression of their feelings in the songs in the speaking in the aspects it happens in many many ways Continue in his badness. <laughs> I am your maidservant, but I have never seen you. Where are you? In which kunja? Or behind which tree are you hiding? Please show yourself to me at once. <coughs> Save my life by revealing yourself. Look, I'm dying. Please, cast a merciful glance on me. My life can only be saved. If you kindly show me your sweet self with Madana Mohana and your sakis standing in the shade of a wish yielding tree on the bank. Of Radha Kun. Repeat. The beginning will start. Yeah. Not from all the years, but from this part. <coughs> Save my life. <coughs> Save my life by revealing yourself. <laughs> Look, I'm dying. Please, cast a merciful glance on me. <coughs> My life can only be saved if you kindly show me your sweet self with Madana Mohana and your sapiens <coughs> standing in the shade of a wish yielding tree on the bank of Radakun. <laughs> So, when we are listening these words, immediately we can feel the feelings of Tulsi mm -hmm. So, to connect our feelings with his feelings or her feelings is the best <coughs> we should try at least to feel a little bit of his feelings. Because those feelings are transcendental feelings. It's not ordinary, nice, warm feelings. 
it's transcendental love, transcendental tenderness is present in Tulasi's feelings. And she is saying, save my life. So we should feel the feelings of a person who is saying this words, please save my life. We should feel his condition, his state of heart, state of consciousness, state of greed, longing. We should feel it. Please, Rabbi, save my life. And he is speaking, addressing Radhika like this because he doesn't have anyone else but Shri Only you can save my life because you are my only love. And only my only love can save my life. So we can see here that poetry is very important to express the rasa and spiritual feelings. We all have experiences with different poetries and we said I like this person who is writing poetry because he touches my heart and I can listen to his poetry again and again and again, 20, 30, 50, 60 years again and again. Why? Because he touches my heart. And not only that he touches my heart, I also want to go in his heart. How he wrote it. Why he in which kind of position his life he has been. You know, natural questions are starting. Say the same thing is with Rabbi. <clears throat> please, Rabbi, please, my dear Swami, save my life. So when we feel at least a little bit of his feelings, then his feeling will in, be infused in our heart. This is the mystery of transcendental personalities, Rasi Guru. <laughs> they are wanted to infuse all feelings from their hearts. They are waiting candidates to invest in them. And they are investing to everyone who approaches. The second thing is, I cannot receive, I just receive 10%, I have received 5%, I have 20% received, 50% received. Receiver is a problem, not the giver. <laughs> so we need more association with those persons who can infuse this bhakti in our community, specifically here, in our heart. <clears throat> So in that way we will be very, very connected. And our heart will start to change and melt mm -hmm. because of their feelings. You want to say something? No, no, no. But I'm astonished that Tulsi is going to please Show me, show me yourself. <coughs> wow. Um, I thought if she's the goddess, show me yourself. I, I think I would be too shy to, 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 to say this thing. Could you please repeat the image? <coughs> Save my my life by revealing yourself. By revealing yourself. This is this is something. 
but actually there is no fear between them. Yes, that, that's a really astonishing. This is the natural love. Yes. If Tulsi thinks that Radhika is supreme goddess, yes. she will never address Radhika like this. But because they are close, <laughs> they are completely one in emotion. Mm -hmm. There is no any fear and hesitation. We have a fear and hesitation and blockages. You know? When, when we, there is no closeness. <laughs> we had the subject yesterday also about intimacy. Plus, this revelation or vision, they are coming and going. And when Raghunatha Swami is in his father Pavesh as tulips, then she is speaking with Swamini, like doing, you know, seva, to teach us also. He comes to this world, Radhika sends her dasi to the world to show us, yes, sometimes these visions are not there, and then I am praying, save my life. <laughs> Make me alive, because then again I can fear you, I can serve you. I feel without your direct perception, I feel uh, dead. It's a death. She feels like a death if you cannot directly be in service. So he shows these feelings, and they are so close that he is not afraid to, you know, be very personal with Swami. In the end of his prayers, or her prayers, he says, even Govardhan, even Radhakun, they seem to be like a python. It's, uh, they are eating me up. Why he is so extreme in his expressions of eagerness? Because somehow, it's a very personal feeling, like you said, without fear, that he is expressing also for our uh, development. Rudy also often says, you, we need to speak to someone. It's important. And to overcome the fear overcome too much this tendency to be too awe, too much in awe and reverence, in majestic uh, understanding of goddess or God. This Aishwarya Bhav in Sanskrit. And uh, yesterday also Radha Chadan was uh, exchanging nice stories from old times, from Sakita distribution. When we have the most ecstatic feelings, when we are speaking to them, why not you send people who want the books? I'm standing here doing this for you. You are the super soul and all the hearts. Send someone or I will stop. <laughs> this was a pure desperate feeling, but it was a feeling. And then what happens when feelings come, something is flowing. So, yeah, but waiting for this, that it become natural. No? That, is, that is our position. It is not natural right now. I feel like I am, like you said, so nicely blocked. Why I not speak to my son? Why can I not speak? Like Raghunath Asko Swami, Swami, make me alive. I feel like a stone. I feel, yes, I know I am your part and parcel. I know I am your Dasi. But I want to live in these species. That will make me alive. Otherwise, I will be feeling dead. So this. Yeah, this is like my my development to be to come more personal, to be speaking this one. I am also not I also always forget this. 
But when I do it and it becomes natural, then there's something is you know something more is happening. Mm. We don't need to be afraid to speak to her. Mm. She's waiting for that. Mm. Who said that? Yeah. I, I don't know. She's waiting for that. Okay. She's waiting for this intensity of longing. And she's waiting for this girl who has been accepted by Guru Mahajani to become a knight. To come closer. She's ready. But I am still blocking myself because of old habits of old impressions, fears. <laughs> we can, from from this two sentences, we can get this beauty of this scripture, of this poetry, because it's such a paradox. Save my life. And please spend me a side glance. Save my life and be, and at the same time she can say it because she has a personal relationship. And at the same in the same moment she is missing it. So I think this is such a gem shimmering lit glistening. And so we can read it without ever ending. It is ever fresh because of this. Yeah. this it's, I think it's really holy that it is possible to give words to them, that, that we can get this expression. And we need time and time and speaking and to, to, to also get this glimpse. So this is reason why in the words 14 in, in, in the beginning Raghunath is praying and glorifying Rukumanjari. The key is Guru Mandir. We cannot overcome fear and hesitation directly approaching to Radhika. Mm -hmm. So it's super. We should have desire for that. But first we need Guru Rati. Obsession in my Guru Mantra. And Ragna here, the Tulsi Mantra is completely obsessed in Rati with Rupa Mantra. Because of her, I can address Radhika, I can even think of Radhika, I can desire Radhika, I want to serve Radhika. Because she, she has back. back. She's bold because Rupa Manjari is behind her and giving her support. Always holding for the hands and saying, come, come, come with me. I will show you what they are doing in the conjure. Come, come. Pick up these broken garlands. Come, come. Sweep this conjure. You know? So this is also relationship and we cannot overcome the steps <clears throat> too fast. That's the point. We should develop Guru Shraddha, Guru Nishtha, and Guru Rati. Automatically, with this Guru Shraddha, it's going Nishtha Shraddha. And automatically, spontaneously, it's going Nishtha Nishtha. It goes Guru Rati, obsession. I'm crazy of out of love with my for my Guru Mantra. I don't know anyone else but my Guru Mantra. She is my best friend. And Raghunath is saying here, oh my friend. My friend. 
Rupa. Guru Manjari is my best friend, and we have to realize it. And we have to relish this. Then all the blockages will just disappear. This is the key point. Guru Rade. From Guru Rati, friendship automatically is coming. So, Closeness is automatically yes. coming. Because I'm obsessed with you, automatically, I'm close to you, and you are close to me also. And we don't have any blockages, walls, between us, because we are obsessed with each other. Guru Manjir is also obsessed with such kind of shisha. This is a personal good example. This outside of my world would be here. This outside of my world would be here. Yes. You have already so much blessings from your past lives. That's what I've mentioned. Thank you. So beautiful, this point, we, we not jump. No? We go also from this, our sadaka they are here, we develop relationship with all the gurus in my life, and especially Guru Mahajani is the one who has given me life. She has given me my spiritual form, my spiritual nature, my feelings. She's giving me all inspirations to always be in that consciousness. It's not my doing, it's the mercy. And she is inspired by the Like very nice point, this Bekka, to feel so strong. That's why Gurudev always says, I'm always with you. Not only when I am sitting there, to feel this internal intimacy <coughs> that is I also want to be more better again and again <coughs> try more feel more come closer open my heart get out of ego this is the light that Raguna does was found Manjari is speaking ever since some Manjari named Rupa filled my eyes is light. Open the eyes. We are singing this. Amagyana, Timyandas, yeah. When Shri Guru Chada Nerati, this is the starting point and actually also the end point. No? It goes to this ultimate goal. It's not impersonal. It becomes more and more personal and more and more deeper. Srila Raghuna Dasa Goswami is crying out of separation. Inundating the bank of Radhakum with his loving tears. Suddenly, a transcendental vision comes to him. Swamini calls him in this spiritual revelation. To Lassi, how sweetly is she calling? Her voice is like a stream of nectar <coughs> that cools off to Lassi's heart. <coughs> that is afflicted by separation. When Tulasi looks around, 
She sees Svamini standing before her. How many tears of compassion are streaming from her eyes. <coughs> that are illuminated by Mahababa. As she calls her maidservant. <coughs> with a tender heart filled with compassion. I want to just uh, mention that how interesting Baba is explaining, <laughs> painting pictures in, in our hearts, in my heart. Shimati Radhika is crying when she looks also at her Dasi. And her tears are illuminated by Mahabha. So just like I try to put this picture in my heart. These are shining tears. They are not just water. It's the feelings of her highest love. Usually she has only for Krishna. But as we have heard, she also has them for her king <laughs> That is amazing. Usually she has this highest Maha. Maha means big. Bhava means feeling. Like big amount of feelings. She has them for Krishna, right? But here also is expressed her tears when she sees this Dasi crying eager, you know, hope, full of hope, but also hopeless. Why not you take me? Just like this. Then she also cries because of affection. <laughs> and these tears are so full of love that this is coming to the Dasi also. This feelings of Mahabhava tears. So we should meditate on this. You said, when we are reading, personal reading, we should stop on these things and allow ourselves to meditate. Yes. Just to absorb mm -hmm. our mind and heart. Don't go anywhere else. Just mm -hmm. stay here mm -hmm. and do budget. This is a budget. Mm -hmm. This is a budget. Mm -hmm. And if we understand mm -hmm. and accept mm -hmm. our spiritual identity, mm -hmm. that the more we will feel mm -hmm. the feelings of Tulsi the more we are identified with spiritual identity, the more we will enter in the feelings of this. And then many other deep revelations will start to so, this, this is the proof that this Vilapa Kusumanjali is manual for manjali. And something else I want to share from my personal life. Sorry, but it's uh, connected to this. When my mother was about 
75 she met yeah, our little person. And she was very simple girls. She was chanting maybe for 10 years in the way she could chant. In that time, I said to her, Mama, you have to come. One special soul, one special sadhu, one special teacher is close by. I will drive you. I will come with you. We were sitting in front of all this. And my mother, she was so in love with him, like on first sight. And I was just thinking about this point of this obsession is real. Because sometimes we think, yeah, good, if I can wait. And sometimes even Gurudev says, you wait. Take your time. Don't rush. But my mother, she was so excited. And she, you know, then she said, can you be my master? <laughs> it was always very direct. I got this one. Nice character. And said, yes. Can you be my master now? <laughs> yes. And it was, you know, amazing in such a short time that they met. This is the only time they met. In, and Rudy said, so when, yes, okay, so when do you want it? And she says, now? And we work it now? And she was eager. In her simple way, no? But simple, no? But innocent in this regard. And Rudy said, yes, I will give you everything. So we went to another room and he was going to give her initiation. And I must say also my mother, she is so simple, but she also was a little bit uh, sick, mentally sick, emotionally. A lot of suffering from her life and this and that, what she thinks of the war, she was also war. She, she had many blockages in the heart. But somehow with good if she could open up immediately and become greedy. She was so greedy. So we went to the room and Guru was giving my mantra. Also, he told her that she is a manchari and a spiritual flower girl. He was telling her all these things. He gave her everything at that moment because she was so greedy. He felt that he wanted to give. He was also, you know, also by disciples' feelings, also Guru can reciprocate. At the end, my mother, I remember right today, I was sitting to translate, Guru was sitting in front of me and she was sitting on this side. In the end, my mom, in this transformation of a short time, she became really like a child. Mm -hmm. in her age and she put her head on Gurudev's lap <laughs> yes Gurudev was doing like this and she says I love you <laughs> and Gurudev said I love you it was very simple very uncomplicated and uh, at the time of death, my mother has passed. I I just said to her, "Remember, you are that flower girl." 
and she smiled and she you know, left with the open eyes of amazement. And uh, I mean, you know, it was always she was so full of suffering and old impressions of old life stories. And then, just this blessing of Gurudev made her whole life change and, you know, she kept it in her heart. In between meeting Gurudev and leaving body, she was again, you know, covered, like all of us are covered again and again mm. by old things. But still, when she left, I saw that she was full of these uh, impressions in her heart. Mm. And I just want to share this because this eagerness and the simplicity also is not so complicated, no? Mm. It's just a feeling. And it was causeless mercy. It's not always taking too long. It can be also very good. Depends no? on who it is. Feeling and the situation. So take a chance. We are in Vrindavan. Develop your greediness by hook and by crook. I also speak to myself. I have to be so greedy. But by all your mercy, it will come. And by Shimati Radhika's mercy, we will progress. But I just want to give one example of some very simple person who does not know much philosophy, only following because of some faith and suffering. And it saved her. For this I will always be eternally thankful to Guruji also and that I could somehow serve in this situation. And she became, at that moment, she became like a mantra on Gurudev's lap, crying, I love her. It became like between Radhika and the... And that's why you say it so nicely. It happens first with Gurudev, with Guru Mantra. Touchstone and also opening the heart. It's not that I have to wait until my heart is open. I am not ready now. But this will happen by grace also. She can give, like Radhika gives, with the tears of Mahabhav. She is transmitting them to Tulsi Mantra. It's never that it's her own. She's giving her heart, her life, and her feelings also to her mantra. Yes. I always in this sharing my tears. Uh, so, you know, for you, because your love is so great, I give you everything. I belong to you. And then, when Shrimati Radhika is in that mood, I belong to you also. You are mine, and I belong to you. And then also, Tulsi Madri gets the chance to do most <laughs> confidential and deepest service where Shimadi Radhika is fully in her lap. You know what I mean? It's like she becomes also completely uh, vulnerable, open, and depending on her mantra. It's an exchange, it's not one sign. Of God consciousness. It's slow. It can come very quickly by one second. I think it was so deep. As should be stuck here was so deep that if you meditate on this what was would you go to We can do. What is your desire? I believe there are some small sentences which are 
Und sehr gut. Ja. Und dann finde ich wieder das so. Mhm. Das ist ja gut. Mhm. That honey sweet voice of Swamini. Save my life by revealing yourself. Look, I'm dying. Please. Cast a merciful glance on me. My life can only be saved. If you kindly show me your sweet self with Madana Mohana and your sakis standing in the shade of a wish yielding tree on the bank of Radhaguru. Shiva Dragunath Dasa is crying at a separation. Inundating the bank of Radhakund with his loving tears. Suddenly, a transcendental vision comes to him. Swamini calls him in this spiritual revelation. Tulasi, how sweetly is she calling? Her voice is like a stream of nectar that cools off Tulasi's heart. That is afflicted by separation. When Tulasi looks around, she sees Swamini standing before her. How many tears of compassion are streaming from her eyes?